Uh, thank you very much for that very warm uh, welcome. And can I start by acknowledging the traditional custodians of land in which we stand and pay my respect to elders past and present. Can I acknowledge uh, the effervescent Chris Brown and congratulate him in the Western Sydney Dialogue for the thought leadership you provide uh, to all of New South Wales. Can I acknowledge your outstanding patrons, uh, some of whom are here today. It's wonderful to see so many, uh, so many of our most intelligent and successful people really supporting the work of the dialogue and really ensuring that government and all stakeholders uh, are aware of the needs, aspirations and hopes of this phenomenal region of New South Wales. Can I also acknowledge my parliamentary colleague and Minister for Western Sydney, Stuart Ayres, and he, more than anyone around the Cabinet table, keeps all of us accountable uh, as we keep ourselves accountable on, uh, on what we can do to really support what is such an energetic, exciting and enthusiastic community uh, in Western Sydney. And it's wonderful to be here today uh, in the city of Parramatta, which is the geographic centre of Sydney, and note that I say Sydney, not Western Sydney, uh, because we know all the growth uh, in Western Sydney is happening west of this region. And uh, again, uh, I want to really thank the, the dialogue, the Western Sydney Dialogue, for having me here today, because uh, the Lachlan Macquarie Lecture or Address does honour the most influential leader in colonial Sydney, and the person credited with moving Sydney from a penal colony, colony to a free settlement. We have a, uh, we owe him a debt of gratitude for his extraordinary vision of what this city in Greater Sydney would one day become. He was the great builder of the early colony and even got in trouble with his London masters for spending too much on public works. Uh, but I think even he would be amazed at the amount of infrastructure that our government is supporting here in Western Sydney and beyond. And uh, it's really pleasing to note, uh, as you travel around the region, the, the amount of progress that is going on. But I want to make something very clear, and that is, uh, in my term of reference, uh, Western Sydney is the first choice for families and individuals uh, to live, work, and also to spend their time. It is the essence of modern Australia, culturally diverse, a place where citizens enjoy world-class services, and the centre of a booming economy which is producing the highly skilled jobs of tomorrow. It's a place where hard work and ingenuity are rewarded, and I would argue that Western Sydney is the heart and soul of Australian culture, a place which is egalitarian in spirit, which embodies the principles of a fair go, and which has a rich indigenous, colonial and immigrant heritage. The region has a long and rich history of Aboriginal people living connected to this area, beginning with the Darug people. And of course, in colonial times, Lock and Macquarie preferred Parramatta to Sydney Cove, establishing government house here. He also identified, named and mapped out many of the centres which still mark Western Sydney, uh, as was mentioned in the introduction, Liverpool, Windsor, Richmond and many others. And there are still distinct communities with their own characteristics. And again, today, uh, Western Sydney is home to many diverse communities, many immigrants who came to this country for a better life and have found it. More than 200 languages are spoken, around four in 10 people speak a language other than English at home. Uh, some arrived generations ago and some more recently. And it's really a place where anyone can aspire to anything they wish, and it's certainly a sentiment that res resonates uh, very personally with me. And as you all know, with a population of over 2 million, Western Sydney is Australia's third largest economy in its own right, would be Australia's fourth largest city. And uh, again, uh, contributes 8% of our country, uh, contributes 8% towards our country's, our nation's gross domestic product and is home to 36% of all jobs in Sydney. In many ways, it is the engine room of New South Wales, and fast forward 20 years and the economy will be supporting one million more people. If current trends continue by 2036, more than 50% of Sydney's population will live west of Parramatta. And of course, it wasn't always like this. Uh, the success of Western Sydney wasn't always acknowledged. Even a few decades ago, perceptions of Western Sydney were very different from what they are today. And it, it is the notion of the quality of opportunity that can give individuals a choice and freedom to be their best, which I believe is a key to success of Western Sydney. Governments have enabled this uh, through more spending on infrastructure and quality services, but I do want to pay credit to the people of Western Sydney who've really contributed to this wonderful growth and opportunities that exist today. Uh, Parramatta may be the geographic centre of Sydney, but it's also the eastern edge of the western metropolitan area. And one of the governments, our government's most significant initiatives has been the created, creation of the Greater Sydney Commission, which is bringing a long overdue focus to planning for Western Sydney of tomorrow. 
As many of you would know, and I understand presentations have already been uh, conducted today, which demonstrate the Greater Sydney Commission's vision and the government's vision of three cities. So the eastern city, uh, which is where I live, the central city, which marks Parramatta and its surrounds, and the western city. The central notion of the three city approach is that it, makes no practical, it doesn't make practical or economic sense for people in western Sydney to have to travel eastwards for employment opportunities. Instead, good planning across a geographic area the size of the Sydney Basin requires the development of three metropolises, each with a strong and diverse economic base and greater proportion of high value jobs, a distinct local identity uh, and appealing public amenity, and great transport connections within the region and within the region and other regions. And over the past decade, Parramatta has clearly emerged as Sydney's central city. And the government's substantial and continuing investments in infrastructure, health, education, urban renewal, culture and sporting infrastructure will ensure this growth continues. And although Parramatta is a geographic centre of Sydney, the western city, incorporating the existing areas of Camden, Campbelltown, Liverpool and Penrith, is the additional focus for the Greater Sydney Commission. Development of this new Western Sydney is, of course, as much about livability as it is about economic growth and social cohesion. And earlier today, it was really thrilling for me to visit a section of the Western Sydney parklands in Doonside to announce the New South Wales government has purchased an additional 81 hectares of privately owned land, securing its future as open space. Most, most of this transferred land is in the Liverpool local government area with 14 hectares located in Blacktown and also Fairfield as well. Our communities need to have dynamic, healthy and vibrant places to live, work and also enjoy themselves. Uh, Western Sydney parklands covering more than 5,000 hectares and stretching 27 kilometres from Blacktown to Liverpool is the largest urban park in Australia and is visited by more than 3 million people a year. And today, uh, this morning's announcement marked our absolute commitment to investing in, in future, um, future locations such as that, which ensure that previously privately owned land is returned back to the community. Uh, and that's why I was so pleased to be there. But what we've done in the last six years as a government and what we intend to do really focuses on uh, Western Sydney is the heartbeat of the state. Uh, there's no doubt that the investment we're putting in transport, uh, in public transport, is transforming the lives of people uh, in the region. Uh, the South West Rail Link was completed and we've also, obviously through the North West Metro, the Second Harbour Rail Crossing and the Metro out to Bankstown, uh, we'll see enormous growth along that corridor. And it will also ensure that the existing rail system has increased capacity. And for us, it's important not just to provide these new metro and these new railings for the future, but also ensure that it's much easier for people to move within the region. But in addition to that, we've upgraded uh, many stations throughout Western Sydney, we've provided more car parking space, and of course, uh, also improved uh, the, road and, uh, the road and road network and its interaction with the rail system. And we're also very excited about the Parramatta Light Rail, which is critical to providing a catalyst for the, for the development of the Parramatta CBD in surrounding areas. And there's no doubt in the future that we will look towards extending the light rail, especially westwards, and that's an opportunity we look forward to examining further. But it's extremely pleasing that the first stage of the light rail will link Parramatta CBD to the West Mid Health Precinct, to the uh, Parramatta North Urban Transformation Program, the new Western Sydney Stadium, uh, the new museum, uh, Rose Hill Racecourse, and also three Western Sydney University campuses. So it is really about uniting uh, the region. We've also, of course, uh, adjusted our rail services and road network to ensure greater opportunities to travel within the region. If we're creating jobs in the region, we need to make sure people have the transport options within the region as well. So whether it's trains and buses and even ferries, we've made sure that those services connect people better within regional centres. We are, of course, also spending billions of dollars on our road upgrades, uh, and among the projects uh, that are underway or, or near completion include upgrades to Mulgoa Road, of course, uh, the M4, M5, West Connects, Walgrove Road, Schofields Road, and the list goes on. But we, 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 are, we know that as a government, the more we invest, the more the region will return to us in bounds uh, because of what it means to productivity and lifestyle and what it means uh, for improved quality of life. But I'm also really pleased to know that we're investing in the health infrastructure and the education infrastructure of the region. Uh, there is no doubt uh, that Western Sydney Health 
receives the fair share of uh, health funding um, throughout the state. And the centrepiece, of course, is the billion dollar redevelopment of Westmead into one of the world's premier health precincts. And this isn't just about a premier health precinct, but it's about how this precinct interacts with, it, with education and other community-based facilities. Uh, stage one alone will cost $900 million and will include world's best practice acute uh, services, operating theatres, and again, a precinct linked into vital education facilities. Recently, I inspected the site for the new acute services building at Blacktown Hospital, uh, which, which again um, provides enormous support through the Blacktown and Mount Druitt uh, Health Precinct. And in November last year, I was very pleased to have committed more than half a billion dollars to deliver stage one of the Nepean uh, Hospital Redevelopment. Uh, again, which will include an uh, upgrade of the clinical services block, emergency department, operating theatres, and investment in a region which is the fastest growing in Sydney. In education, we're ensuring that the, so that the uh, growth of the community is matched by the social infrastructure through our education investment. Sydney's first vertical high school located on the Arthur Phillips School site in Parramatta will be a chance to bring the latest design and teaching methods to the education system. And uh, Western Sydney is also one area in which the public education system is working in very well with a non-government and private sector education system. And planning for schools generally and education needs through all sectors has really been a hallmark of the success of our ability to meet the growing capacity needs of the region. And I'm very pleased that since 2011, since we came to government, 13 new or relocated public schools um, have taken place and eight major school upgrade projects uh, have been announced. So in all, more than 20 uh, new school upgrades um, have been conducted in Western Sydney alone. And this again uh, ties into the notion that we want to ensure that every person uh, in New South Wales and especially in Western Sydney has the opportunity to be their best. And when you have access to great education, great healthcare and great transport services, you can make sure uh, you have the equality of opportunity to be your best. But of course, it's also important for growing communities to have access to world-class sporting and cultural facilities. Uh, we're investing uh, $1.6 billion in new or redeveloped stadiums, with the vast majority of this being spent in Western Sydney. Uh, really excited that the new Parramatta Stadium will be a world-class venue uh, with a capacity of 30,000 within walking distance of the city centre, which has access uh, to major, major uh, transport infrastructure. ANZ Stadium will be redeveloped to become the premier sporting venue in Sydney and it will rival anything uh, in Australia or overseas. And of course, Sydney Olympic Park continues to provide a lasting sporting legacy as the home of many key uh, sports, including the Netball Centre of Excellence, the GWS Giants training facility, and will be the site of the New South Wales Rugby League Centre of Excellence. But as in, far, in terms of the cultural space, um, Western Sydney, uh, is also emerging as such a vibrant uh, culture and arts precinct. And we believe supporting that precinct is so integral to the lifestyle amenity of the, of the region. And we have the opportunity to build an iconic world-class museum in the heart of Parramatta, uh, on, which is in the cutting edge uh, of science and innovation. And we are looking forward to getting on with this project. It will be a flagship campus for the Museum of Applied Arts and Scientists and provide an opportunity to showcase uh, significant um, exhibitions as well as an interactive opportunity uh, for people, uh, for, for people uh, seeking education in both applied arts and sciences. This is one of the most exciting developments to come to Western Sydney in many years and it will provide not just an opportunity for jobs uh, and economic growth but of course tourism for the region. But when you spend so much on infrastructure, when you have a community and a population uh, that is so entrepreneurial uh, in nature, you can't underestimate the impact that this is having on jobs growth and uh, on jobs creation. And this jobs creation is spurred on by government investment, but also by private investment coming off the back of the government's contribution. It's so exciting that international firms like Talis, KPMG and PwC have set up in Western Sydney. And of course, Deloitte have been here for many years. And we're very pleased that in the last six years alone, since we've come to government, more than 106,000 jobs have been added across Western Sydney. That's a rise of nearly 10%, 9.2% in the number of jobs. Uh, Western Sydney accounts for a third of the 300,000 odd jobs we've created across New South Wales. And I also wanna take this opportunity to note the contribution of small and medium sized businesses who've contributed to this sustained jobs growth. Uh, in November 2009, the unemployment rate in Western Sydney was 7.2%. Uh, 
Now it's down to 5.6%. And of course, we're also pleased as a government to have proactively moved a number of our agencies to Western Sydney. Uh, a thousand have already been relocated, and in all, we'll have more than 4,000 uh, public servants uh, relocated in, in Western Sydney in the next, in the next uh, few years. But of course, an exciting project, which the state government's extremely enthusiastic about, is a new airport at Badgerus Creek, which will genuinely be a game changer for our state and of course for Western Sydney. It is central to our plans to make Western Sydney one of the world's greatest places to live and work and also to transform the region's economy. We expect the airport to generate over 30,000 jobs by 2035 uh, increasing to up to 60,000 in the longer term. And the type of industries which will support jobs growth in the, in the region will be logistics, freight, aerospace, aviation and advanced manufacturing. Of course, also biolife sciences and medical devices, agribusiness, ICT education, and this will spur on skills training and apprenticeships and of course tourism and entertainment. The Commonwealth Government or the Federal Government has estimated that the new airport could increase our national GDP by $25 billion. But we have no doubt that the airport will be a catalyst for the economic development of the region and the key to improving employment and social outcomes for the people of Western Sydney. I know the Western Sydney Dialogue have been extremely active in this space and I want to assure you the State Government is as enthusiastic as you are to get on with the job of building this critical piece of infrastructure. And of course, parts of Western Sydney are still places of challenge, but we are in a strong position as a government to support those most vulnerable. Uh, we're providing additional support to, to keep families together. Uh, we're ensuring that uh, our social services are more prominent than ever. And our strong investment in schools and hospitals and transport is also ensuring access to those most vulnerable in the community. And I'm very pleased to note uh, that in the area of social impact investment, for example, uh, we used a number of pilots in Western Sydney to see how government could better work with a not-for-profit and, and private sector in providing social services to key parts of the community. Selfishly, it is in my interest and in our government's interest to continue to enable Western Sydney to grow and for all of us uh, and for all of you who live within the region to reach your full potential. And I say this, uh, I say this because uh, I really want to pay tribute to the people of Western Sydney. Uh, the notion of a work ethic, the notion of reaching your full potential, even though you might come from hum humble beginnings, is a cultural zest which exists in Western Sydney, which has really contributed to the su success of the region. Uh, Lachlan Macquarie's efforts have shaped the city we have today. And as, as was the case in the Macquarie era, as a government, we intend to continue building and investing in Western Sydney and provide a foundation for successive generations. I'm extremely proud to be a part of a government who for six years has dedicated our attention and, inv and investment in this region and which has and will continue to deliver unprecedented investment and support to the region. We've enabled this with spending on infrastructure, job creation and planning policy but the people of Western Sydney have, run, have taken uh, this and run with it. And I really do want to pay tribute to the citizens of this great region. Our government has made an unprecedented investment and our efforts will continue to increase. We have enabled the community to feel confident and resourceful when building their lives and that of their families. Their continued success of Western Sydney is a huge part of the success story of New South Wales. And I look forward to watching this success story continue to unfold. Every time I visit the region and meet people of any age, of any background, I leave feeling completely inspired. And in the end, I believe it is this industry, this intelligence and the energy of our citizens of the region that makes such a strong community. Western Sydney is very rich on all these measures and I want to assure the community of our government's continued investment into the heartbeat of this part of New South Wales. Thank you very much.